I personally have not shot with the Lumix S1H, but that's for a, kind of a, a reason, a good reason that's pretty relatable to most people, I think. And that's the fact that I didn't really need it and it's kind of expensive, especially for a camera that I, I don't need right at this point in time. So right now the S1H is $4,000 and I think it is time for a price drop on the S1H. This camera does a lot of what you would want and we can take a look at it. The S1H is a beautiful, beautiful camera full of features that if you don't know about the S1H, well like take a look because it's a fantastic camera. It does everything you would want pretty much, um, but it's $4,000 right now. And I think that's a little expensive compared to the competition that's come out from Canon and Sony right now. Now these cameras, the Canon, the R5, and the Sony a7S III aren't actually out yet, but they've been announced. And so anytime there's an announcement, people are always looking forward. They're gonna save money, getting ready to you know pre-order or buy it when it comes out. And these cameras are coming very soon. The S1H is out right now and you can buy it right now. And I think Panasonic would be really smart to reduce the price on this considering this is 4,000. The R5 is like 4,000 or a little bit lower. I think I've seen it listed at like 3,800. Uh, the A7S3 is like 3,500. So right now the S1H is the most expensive, rightfully so. It's a great camera that does a lot of cool stuff. Um, so let's take a look at what you're do gonna do with the S1H. If you don't know, um, for the people that do, just embrace the recap of just how cool this camera is. Uh, the S1H uh, has dual ISO, um, or dual ISO, however you like to say it, for better low light. Again, I really wanna get my hands on this camera so I can actually test this out. Um, but based on you know user reviews and people have talked about the camera, it works really well. Um, just cleaner signal. The S1H is full frame. Like, let's start there. It's, it's full frame. Um, you've got the option to go all the way up to 6K if you want. And this camera came out in 2019. So before Canon was doing 8K, before Sony was doing uh, 4K 120, Panasonic was doing 6K on a full frame mirrorless camera um, and 4K 60 for that fact as well. 422 10-bit internal recording, beautiful. Like this, these are features that people have wanted for a long, long time. And there will always be the people who say, well, it's a photo camera, so you don't need it. But yet they keep adding all these awesome features that make the video people happy. And we're like, yes, I'll happily keep shooting with these cameras. Like a hybrid should be the best of both worlds. 422 10-bit doesn't hurt anything on the photography side. It only helps on the video side. Uh, proper V-Log. So uh, if you know the GH5, the GH4, V-Log L. Highly criticized V-Log L. S1H has V-Log, the regular real deal 14 stops, 14 plus stops of dynamic range with real deal V-Log, um, which is fantastic. What else do we have on the S1H? Well, we've got video performance. And again, you can go look at this. This is just the Amazon page, but I think it's fun to kind of go through to see all the cool features that they call out. Cause this is stuff that like is relatively unique still in the hybrid uh, market, something that's so dedicated to video. Now there is the S1 and the S1R that are more photography cameras. So I'm just talking about the S1H, which if you're gonna do hybrid full frame mirrorless, like the S1H is the one you wanna get. HDR video, anamorphic. You know, Canon and Sony, like they don't even talk about anamorphic, but it's really valuable for the people who want to shoot that way. Cause like, it's a cool feature to have. Variable frame rates, obviously high, uh, high frame rate stuff. Um, you can do time lapses right in the camera. That's becoming more and more common, but that was like one of the best things about the GH4 was just the ability to do a time lapse right in the camera. I didn't have to download an app. I didn't need an external intervalometer like I had to have with my previous like Canon and Nikon cameras back in the day, shooting like DSLR, you know, um, time lapse stuff of the night sky. It was all right in the camera. I'm like, this is brilliant. Yes, keep it in there. Um, you've got the flip screen, the beautiful flip screen that goes every direction you would want it to go. You can do selfie style. I know it's kind of silly to do selfies on a camera of this caliber, but still you have the functionality to be able to do it. I, I, Sony finally fixed it, thank, thank goodness. Uh, you got LCD on top, you got a high resolution viewfinder, uh, the body design, yes, 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 we know you've done a great design on this. Uh, dual record buttons, I probably would only ever use the one, but hey, you have them, and uh, you have some you know, wireless Wi-Fi uh, remote viewing type features. And durability and reliability, we can go through this. Uh, we got in-body image stabilization. People, I, mean, I think people criticize it on the S1H that it could be better, but it's there. So like, doesn't that make you excited for like the S2 or the S2H? 
um, the fact that it's there. And then, hey, if it, if it sucks, you can always turn it off. Um, it's built tough. Yes, yes, yes. It's got a fan. This thing is not going to overheat. As I mean, you probably if you if you're filming lava, it'll probably overheat. But they put a fan in there because they knew that these cameras are full frame. They're shooting high resolution. They're shooting high frame rate. They knew it was going to overheat, and they put a fan in it. Give them a round of applause, and shame on Canon and Sony for not putting fans in their camera. It's ridiculous that they have an 8K camera that you can only shoot 10 or 20 minutes. You get a tally lamp beautiful video feature and double SD card slot of course um, actually sometimes don't even I don't recommend you use both slots sometimes because um, it can be easy to like forget which card has the footage on it and it's an easy mistake to make especially if you're working with a crew but still nevertheless you can have redundancy you can have uh, overflow for where once one card is full you go to the next one it's a good feature to have two slots and I like that they're the same so that's also important it's funny when you have um, uh, cameras that I think was on this list cameras that have an SD slot and then like some other slot and it's like well I just want the one kind of cards in my in my case I don't want to have like two different types of cards what if you fill one set up but then the other set isn't it's I don't understand why cameras have two different they have two slots but they're different formats it, it bothers me. I don't know if it's just I like symmetry or something, but it, it is irritating when, when cameras have uh, two different slots. And then photo performance. So finally, at the bottom of the list, we get to photography features. I'm sorry, photo people. If you think these hybrid cameras are meant just for you, they're meant for photo and video. Embrace it. It's a good thing. Uh, there's a high resolution mode, of course. So using the image stable stabilizer, it's going to take a series of photos and kind of photo stack them. Of course, this is something you can do in Photoshop as well, but the fact that you can do it in the camera is really cool. Um, you've got uh, autofocus, super fast sensor lens communication of 480 frames per second. It's the depth from defocus. I always forget what the DFD stands for. It's depth from defocus. All right. Uh, technology help make high speed, high precision autofocus of approximately 0 0.08 seconds a reality. Now, is this actually going to work in practice when you're out in the field and you're shooting a variety of uh, image, images, subjects, different environments? We know that autofocus doesn't always work. Even the best cameras, it still fails some portion of the time. Um, Panasonic isn't known for the best autofocus. Again, I haven't tested this camera myself, so um, I would be curious to put it through its paces and see, but I have a suspicion that it's probably not the best, but it, it also probably does good too. It's not like, people like to think of it as like, oh, it's the best ever, and if it's not that, it's the worst ever. It's like autofocus, and these things are constantly getting better and improving. I mean, not too long ago, there were only a few autofocus points on every premium camera, and now there's like a bajillion, because everything's just electronic now, and this doesn't really matter, it's all in the sensor. Um, so it's, it's just funny, the perspective, how it changes over time of people being like, oh, well, it's not the best, so therefore it's awful. It's like, no, it's still good, it's just not as good. So if you really need good, good autofocus, you can go with a different camera, but like, I'm, I'm sure it's acceptable. Accurate autofocus in low light, great. Human body and animal recognition technology, great. Most cameras have this, but isn't it wonderful that it's there? You can take pictures of your cats and it knows it's a cat. Um, HLG photo, uh, it's basically HDR um, photography, a way to do it, um, which is, I mean, a cool feature to have in the camera, I suppose, but you can also do these things with Photoshop. Um, and yeah. So let's talk about the S1H. Having all that in mind, the fact that it's 6K, the fact that it's full frame, the fact that it does all these awesome things, is it time for a price drop? Yes, absolutely. If you drop the price, Panasonic, if you drop the price on the S1H, I'll probably buy it. And I know there's a lot of other people out there who will probably buy it. There's people who have the S1H who will buy more of them because we're looking at the market and we're saying, Canon, the R5, I was excited. I was ready to give Canon my money. I was going to go to the dark side. And then they just they couldn't deliver. There's always there's always that little that little Canon magic that's sprinkled on their cameras. And they say, not quite. It does 8K, but not quite. Um, we, we all knew it was coming. It was inevitable. But the rumors sounded too good to be true. And they absolutely were. So you see the, the R5. I was ready to, I wanted to buy something like that, a full frame camera that can do high resolution, do all these cool features, high frame rate. Yes, let's get that. Wait, not the R5, I'm not getting that. It overheats, giant file sizes, 
no thank you. Recording limits, like, no. I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. Sony, A7S Mark III. Oh, interesting, interesting. Oh, it's still 4K. Oh, it's still kind of primarily focused on, on photos, but it's still only 12 megapixels, so it's not really a photo camera, but it doesn't have all the video features I would want that I've just become really used to. And it also overheats. So, huh, I guess I'm gonna go back to the S1H. Oh, but that's like the older one. And that's, see, that's the mentality that happens. Like, oh, the S1H, well, I'll just wait for the S2 or the S2H, if that's what it's inevitably called, or maybe it'll be, I don't know. I don't know what they'll call it, but the, the sequel, right? The, the follow-up to the S1H. Maybe I'll just wait for that. Uh, maybe I'll wait a year. Maybe I'll wait two years. Maybe I'll wait three years. You know, time goes by and then other cameras come out and people move. Now is the perfect time. Drop the price on the S1H. It's been out since September of 2019 drop the price, you will sell a lot more. Now, what should that price point be? I don't know. If I was if I was really being selfish, I'd want it to be like $3,000. Take $1,000 off uh, the S1H. It's $4,000 now, drop it down to $3,000. Is that realistic? Probably not. It'll probably come down to $3,500, in which case it's like a little bit more of like sitting on the fence still. Like, ooh, I don't know. Do I really need this? I want it, but do I need it? If you bring it down to 3,000, I think you're gonna get a lot of people who buy the S1H because people are, are hungry for cameras that do these types of things. Like right now, the market is primed. People are pre-ordering the R5, they're pre-ordering the A7S III. All of a sudden, Panasonic comes along and says, hey, remember that S1H we came out with that was too expensive when we came out with it and you didn't really know that you wanted it because like we don't have a lot of lenses for it just yet? Yeah, those lenses are coming and guess what? That camera's now $3,000 undercuts the Sony, undercuts the Canon with features that I think far exceed um, what Canon and Sony are offering. And, you know, this was this is a camera that came out almost a year ago. So it's, I mean, I'm yes, looking forward to the future, but by all means, use what's already out there. It's an easy thing. Just like send out the memo. Hey, take $1,000 off that camera and see them fly off the shelves compared to all, you know, all the stuff from Canon and Sony that people are excited for and they're, you know, they have their Canon lenses and they have their Sony lenses, so they're not going to switch. But you have people like me. I'm like a huge GH5 fan and I didn't get the S1H because I was like, I don't really need it a little too much. I want it and it'd be great. It would be fantastic to drop the price right now because then I get in the L mount system. I get used to full frame. I'm talking about me personally now. I get used to all these things and then you've got me, you've got me. I'm buying the L mount lenses. You come out with the S2 and I go, oh, I have to have this one too. And it's new and it's the latest and greatest. Get people buying the S1H. I don't think a lot of have sold. It's not, it doesn't seem from my perspective, a very popular camera. I don't know anyone that owns one. I don't know anyone that shoots with one. Um, of course, there's people online who talk about them, but not nearly uh, to the same level that you see with the Sony and the Canon uh, camps, just because it's the L mount and it's like a new, it's a new system. It's just starting out. But man, the S1H, I mean, these these specs are are incredible for the size of the camera and like it being so focused on video. Drop the price. It's a no-brainer.